Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining me again at Finance JCL. This is one you've been waiting for. We're going to look at a viewer's portfolio, so stay tuned for that. But first, just a refresher. So if you're new to the channel, uh, we look at my £1 million long-term challenge uh, investment portfolio, stock reviews, how-tos, and some personal finance. Now, if we think back to you once to July, I invited viewers to send in their portfolios, and I was going to share them and go through them just so we can see different investing styles, different ideas, share information. And I'd like to thank uh, Adam as well as my viewers for sending his portfolio in. So I've got it here on screen. And we're going to start with the index uh, and cash position. So with the indexes, you can see that makes up uh, around about a third of his portfolio. He's got a small cash position. Now, Adam's objective that he shared is that he wants to perhaps have a relatively low um, maintenance portfolio in that he doesn't have the time in order to spend a lot of time researching individual stocks. Uh, it's a relatively new portfolio, so a lot of this has gone in in the last few years. And he's not looking to make sort of groundbreaking returns. He definitely wants to be um, a high single digits, uh, maybe a 10% return as a sort of a more long term hold or passive basis. So I think we start up here with these and the biggest holding at fifth in the portfolio is the FTSE 250 index. And I've just had a quick Google here and the, you know, the long term return of this index is around about 9%. Uh, that's fairly up to date data. So that feels like quite a good largest position for his objectives. Um, exposure to his home UK market and that long term likes average is about what he's looking at. I think that that's a good one. And there's the opportunity to pound cost average into that position. I've got a smaller holding here for the US index. I think the US index long term has been very strong. Uh, however, it's, its valuation is very rich as it stands. So the impact your return might be a little bit lower than the long term average based on the current valuation. It is still a, a good staple if you're looking at a, a relatively low maintenance portfolio. Low cash position, and I'd expect a low cash position on the basis that this is sort of buy and hold, low maintenance investing. No point in having a load of cash around because if you're dripping, I think you're dripping uh, money monthly into some of these indexes, then you, you want to be pretty much fully invested in those circumstances. And then 3% of the portfolio, so quite small, is looking at the sort of Asia Pacific area. But I think that's quite an interesting long term area for, for growth. But third in indexes. Um, probably would have expected a touch more in indexes if we're looking at this kind of low maintenance portfolio, but let's see what else he's got. So we've got here three managed funds, and this is 27%. So if you add in the indexes to that, you're looking at 60%. Uh, and you add the cash, you're looking at sort of two thirds of the portfolio in indexes or, or managed funds. With this top one, I have held myself, and I think I've held this one for six or seven years, and it's returned to me around about 12% a year compounded. So it's actually outperforming the indice. So this is actually quite a good one to hold uh, based on its historical return. And it's, yeah, it's a good chunk of the portfolio there as well. Um, I don't know too much about the, the Rathbone and the JP Morgan one, so let's just have a quick look. I know that Adam does use Hargreaves Lansdowne, which I think for UK investors for funds is a good platform in terms of the the fees and savings you do get on some of these funds and we look at the annual return on this but it looks pretty impressive 19 21 8 20 and 28 percent so it certainly performed well you can see why people like nvidia amazon adobe google absolutely smashed it out of the park in the last few years so the fee here is 0.5 percent whereas indexes you're probably looking at less than 0.1 percent so you are paying a bit more for this performance JP Morgan Emerging Markets. Um, have a look at this one. The fee here, you know, get up to 0.6%, it's so quite a high fee. Returns haven't been too bad, but there's been that, that negative year there. And of course, you've got Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, Samsung, Tencent, Alibaba. So these are, are strong companies that have done well. I think I think what Adam's looking at here is a bit of exposure to some of the uh, non US companies, emerging market focus probably overlap quite a bit with the Asia Pacific index. It might be worth looking at. Can you get into this Asia Pacific index and get a similar result because your fees are going to be lower here and therefore the return could be higher. So that's something perhaps that I would do in this situation. 
So I think we're now into the individual stock positions and you can see here there's uh, nine of 10 individual stocks. I think the, th the thing with these is Adam's gone for perhaps two categories of individual stock. He's gone for the long-term exciting holds, Coinbase, Peloton, Tesla, Corsair. And then there's a few here that are interesting plays such as uh, TUI and KKBX. So start with Coinbase now. I think I wouldn't have gone in Coinbase uh, at the very beginning of the IPO. And that's because I generally tend to avoid IPOs there's a very high proportion of them, they'll, they'll shoot up straight away and, and then they'll have a bit of a decline. You've got lock-in periods as well and you've got institutional investors taking their profits. So I tend to prefer, like with Corsair, waiting for that initial IPO period to cool off and then there might be a better priced uh, company share later down the line. It's quite a high percent portfolio, 10%, but if you believe in them, and you think they are the premium player in that area and you believe in crypto long term, then I could see perhaps why that might be 10%. Uh, Peloton, and I'll leave a link at the end because I have done a review of Peloton. Again, I think Adam does actually own a Peloton product, so he knows the company products well. We've obviously had negative news recently uh, around health and safety issues for children on treadmills, for instance, but they are, I think in the long term, you know, this company is probably going to grow, particularly you know, if there's more lockdowns, that'll give them an unexpected boost as well. So for Peloton, I can understand why he holds that one as well. I can't say that's a bad buy, but see a lot of the upside has been missed. You know, if it was bought 12 months ago, then that gain would look considerable. Uh, same with Tesla, could have been bought a lot earlier. Easy to say that hindsight. Uh, but again, you know, this is one you could probably hold for five years and just not worry about it. And then we're down to the, the smaller holdings. Corsair, I totally get. Uh, I've done a few reviews of Corsair. I hold that in my portfolio. I think that's a double in five years, no trouble at all. Um, we'll come back to KKVX because it's it's the best performer. I don't really understand it, to be honest. BT, I hold, I think that's a double as well. Uh, I don't know what Vela is, um, so let's have a look at that one. So they invest into other companies, a bit risky because they're investing in early stage disruptive companies, so that's why it's a small percentage play here. But if they make some good investments, I guess there's a very high potential upside to counter that potential risk of investing in startups. So... I can understand why you might have that one. That's a small percentage. Two, I, I don't really like that one because you know, we're coming up towards and there'll be more restrictions probably. You know, COVID hasn't gone away and I'd just stay away from sort of companies like airlines or resort operators because there's just so much uncertainty. I don't think at the moment there's a good pace to say with any degree of certainty what's going to happen with those. Argo blockchain here, 2%. Again, I get that as a crypto player, it's a small percentage of the portfolio, uh, relatively speculative, but there's certainly potential for massive upside there. I look into KKBX. Um, I've got to say, I still don't fully understand them, um, so I can't comment too much. But it looks like they are paying quite a nice special dividend. I believe that's coming up in the next few days. And that special dividend is 21p. That's the value that they're trading at approximately. So that's quite exciting. And yeah, I've had a look through this. I still don't quite get exactly what they do. So they're a fair play. You've had a great return on that one. So no further comment for me. So yeah, it's re relatively new portfolio. There's probably a couple in there that I would just get rid of. Uh, Chewy, bite the bullet, get rid of it, I think. And probably the other one I'd have a look at is the JP Morgan Emerging Markets. Can you get cheaper coverage of something similar? through the iShares index. But otherwise, I, th I think that meets your objective pretty well. So I, thought, I hope you found that interesting. And do, do send me your portfolio contact details at the bottom of the description section if you would like to either perhaps get a different view on your portfolio or maybe you'd like to show off and you've done really well. Maybe you've got a 50% you know, return of the last year and you want to share that with people how you did it so they can learn from that. Please do share it. Great to see. And then speaking of portfolios, I will be sharing probably next week at my updated performance on all my individual holdings. Thank you very much. And click here if you want to know more about Corsair, which is one of Adam's holdings and one of my holdings.